In my last video, I proposed the idea of doing a deep dive on some of my biggest luxury eggs, which a lot of you like the sound of. So today we're going to be looking at popular luxury pieces and also trends that anytime I see I can't help myself, my knee-jerk reaction is an eye roll. Now, obviously this video is meant to be pure lighthearted entertainment you spend your money on whatever and however you please. I don't mean to offend anyone, but at the same time, if you are doing or wearing any one of these things, you are kind of offending me. But without further ado, if you'd like to hear what I have to say about some very popular luxury pieces that frankly just drive me up the wall, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. Let's start with the pieces that have actually inspired this video, which are the lower piano loafers. They have an iconic range of loafers that at this point have become pretty much a status symbol. I have seen people refer to these loafers as the billionaire loafers, which are the so-called lower piano summer walk, open walk, and they also offer these shoes in several different variations for women, which are called the summer charm walk. Now it is a range of slip-on loafers that are handcrafted using the finest materials. If you're not familiar with Laura Piana, I do have a deep dive on the brand, which I can make sure to link up here for you. But one thing is for sure, Laura Piana really has access to the best of the best, which as we know now, they don't always get to through the most ethical ways, but that's a story for another day. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, let me know in the comment section. I would be happy to discuss that too. But anyway, long story short, these are a pair of loafers that are incredibly crafted. They are unbelievably lightweight. If you have ever tried these shoes, you I think the first thing you notice is not only how comfortable they are, but how light they are because they feature a really, really flexible featherweight rubber sole, which these shoes are, as you would expect, handcrafted, and they have become incredibly hard to get. Now, the idea for these shoes, the original concept, was that really well-dressed people would keep these in their office. So at the end of the day, if they wanted to go out for a casual bite, or if they wanted to hop on their boat, they could just throw these shoes on, which were basically a way to dress down a really formal outfit. And I think they do that incredibly well. If you have a wardrobe that is really formal, if you perhaps have a profession or you just really enjoy dressing up and wearing a more tailored look, I think these shoes work beautifully if you are trying to dress an outfit down, which is obviously not why these are a luxury ick for me, because if people wore these the way they were meant to be worn, so with a more formal, more tailored look or with a full linen outfit, I think they would still look incredible. However, what I don't like about these shoes is that people have started wearing them with jeans and even track suits and sweatpants. And what's interesting about these shoes is that they are incredible if they are worn with a more formal look, but as soon as you try to style them with something really casual, they just become incredibly frumpy looking. And obviously because it has become sort of a status symbol, they're kind of the new Rolex Submariner. Do you remember when everyone was trying to get the Rolex Submariner in stainless steel? And it has become sort of a stamp of approval that you have made it. These are kind of the next step. So I think you'll see a lot of people wearing these with jeans and a Rolex Submariner in stainless steel. Anyway, I digress. Because these have become so popular and so wanted. A lot of people have started wearing them and I don't think that these shoes are universally flattering. These are not the kind of shoes that you can just throw on willy-nilly with anything without putting any effort into how you're going to put an outfit together. But it kind of goes against the concept because the idea is that they are really easy, really comfortable, really effortless. But the trick is that you have to put effort into the outfit somewhere else. Otherwise, they will just look really out of place and really disjointed. So again, I don't think that these shoes are bad or we should ride them off. Or if you have these shoes, you should throw them out because I do think that there is a time and a place for them. 
but they are just simply not universally flattering. They are not the kind of shoes that you should keep next to your sneakers because they will not do the exact same thing. But if you are going on a summer vacation and you're looking for a really comfortable pair of shoes that you can wear with a beautiful linen look, or maybe if you're going to a wedding or if you're going to a party on a boat, obviously look no further because these shoes are incredible. They're offered in a ton of different finishes and leathers. You can even have them custom made as long as you can get your hands on them because at this point you cannot just walk into a lower piano store and buy them off the shelf. A lot of the times you do have to have a purchase history or a little bit of a history with lower piano for you to ask for them. Although they do still sell them online, so if I can find them somewhere, I will make sure to have them linked down below for you. But just please keep in mind that they are not an alternative to a pair of sneakers or flip-flops. They are meant to be worn with a more formal look as sort of a more elegant take on perhaps something like an espadrille or a pair of driving shoes. Now, obviously, Laura Piana wasn't the first brand to come up with these boat shoes. Almost every single traditional Italian and European fashion house will have a take on these slip-on loafers, but Laura Piana is the brand that's most well known for it. And I think people love the idea that you can actually write your name on the sole of the shoes, which I feel like most Brunello and Laura Piana pieces do have a little name tag, which helps you customize the overall experience and get more attached to your pieces. But anyway, Laura Piana wasn't the first brand to come out with these shoes, but they they are definitely the brand that's most well known for it. Similar to Louis Vuitton because the next pieces that we'll be looking at are the Louis Vuitton Horizon suitcases. But I guess Louis Vuitton still has a leg up because at least their roads are in traveling. Obviously Louis Vuitton started out by crafting some of the most incredible trunks out there and it's something that they continue to produce but obviously most people don't travel with trunks at this point. However, we still use suitcases and Louis Vuitton has their own range of hard shell suitcases, which I have talked about before. I do not think that these are the most elegant pieces out there. In fact, I think they look kind of basic. But what I wanted to talk about here is not only the idea of owning these suitcases, but Another ick of mine is when people freak out traveling with these suitcases. I have always said that I personally would not feel comfortable spending a ton of money on suitcases because I do not fly private. I don't exclusively fly first class. I don't have someone carrying my suitcases. So I really put my suitcases through the ringer. I mean, these are things that you will be dragging behind you at an airport, you'll have to put them through the x-ray machine, you'll have to put them in the overhead bin or underneath the seat in front of you. These are not really things that you have the capacity to baby. So if you don't feel comfortable, you know, spending thousands of dollars on something that will get used and abused, designer suitcases are not the thing for you to invest in. I do think that it is worth putting a little bit more money into your suitcases. I am a huge fan of Remova suitcases, which are definitely up there in price, but I think they are not too expensive where you'd have to freak out if something happened to one of these pieces. So I do think that Remova suitcases are worth the money, but I would not suggest getting their hard shell suitcases in black because their black coating dust chip, which I was not aware of when I bought my Remova carry-on. So in hindsight, or if I ever buy another one, not that I really think I'll ever have the need because Remova suitcases are known for lasting a lifetime. But if I was to buy another carry-on, I will strictly buy it in silver because silver will scratch and obviously you can create indentations, but at least it will not chip. But when it comes to any other designer suitcases, so suitcases from Hermes or Louis Vuitton, I personally do not see the point of spending a ton of money on, unless again, you do have someone who carries your suitcases, you don't mind, you know, these things getting scratched and marked and looking used, or if you exclusively fly private, I understand why you would invest in these suitcases, but otherwise, Again, these are things that will get 
beaten up and I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people freaking out when they were forced to check in their Louis Vuitton or Goyard suitcases. Even if you fly business or first class, sometimes they'll ask you to check in your luggage on a shorter flight if it's overbooked or if they don't have enough room, they'll ask you to either check it in or they'll take it away from you and they'll keep it in the front of the plane where all the flight attendants have their own bags and jackets. So. I've seen way too many people freak out when their bags get checked in, which trust me, I can completely understand because I do not take any one of my pieces for granted. I try to take very good care of all the things that I own. However, I do know not to spend my money on things that, you know, you just have no control over. So I would say that buying designer suitcases, especially these days, is just not a great idea, not only because they look kind of basic at this point, but also because they could potentially bring unwanted attention to you, especially if you're traveling, you're going to a place that you don't know. If you don't have a car service waiting for you at the airport, it might not be the kind of message that you want to be sending that you're carrying around this really, really expensive suitcase. So for me across the board, designer suitcases are not them, something that I would spend the money on. And anytime I see someone carrying one of these at the airport, my heart doesn't skip a beat. I don't get impressed. Instead, I just roll my eyes. I'm so sorry, but I cannot help it. This next luxury egg, I must admit, I am guilty of too, especially when I lived in my last apartment in New York, which was a studio apartment where I did not have the space to store all my boxes. But one thing that I really personally do not like the look of is people decorating their homes with usually Hermes or Chanel or Dior boxes. I do think that these luxury boxes and shopping bags even are not meant to be used as decoration around your home. Again, this is completely personal. You do whatever you want to do with your home and your own pieces. I'm just purely expressing my interest here. It's something that I personally do not like the look of. So people using boxes and paper bags around their home as decoration, I completely understand if you want to hold on to your boxes or if you want to make your wardrobe feel like a little store and you want to keep your boxes on display there. Or maybe if you have purchased your first luxury piece, which is really sentimental, it's something that you it took you a long time to save up for, or you were going back and forth on what to buy as your first luxury piece, and you want to hold on to that special box or that special bag, that to me makes perfect sense It has a, if it has a sentimental value to you. But people who will build towers in their living rooms of orange boxes, or people who will make Christmas trees out of their Hermes boxes, to me, that is something that immediately makes my eyes roll. I don't know why that is, but it is just one of my biggest eggs. But this last thing for me is the biggest luxury egg, which is rudeness. When people think that just because they shop at Hermes or Chanel, they are entitled to be rude to people, especially when they go shopping. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people being rude and just impolite to people working at luxury stores, which to me is my biggest luxury ick. Even in my personal life, if I go on a date with someone or if I meet a friend who goes on and is rude to someone who works in hospitality, so if we're sitting at a restaurant and someone is rude to a waiter, that to me is the biggest red flag. I'm not kidding. I have broken friendships over people being rude to the wait staff because to me, I just don't see the need to do that. And I understand everyone has bad days. We all go through things, but we should not project our own anger and our own bad day on someone else. That's just not the time and the place. So for me, rudeness is a huge luxury egg. And I do believe that kindness is incredibly underrated, but it goes a really long way. I know that luxury shopping can be quite frustrating these days. Luxury shopping is not what it used to be with all the lines and all the hype because of social media, but I think being kind should not be overlooked. So for me, rudeness is one of those things that to me just, if I hear or see someone being rude, that to me is an immediate 
not only red flag, it's kind of like those people are getting blacklisted in my mind. So please don't be rude. Please be nice. And if you know someone that's rude, well, I guess that's a great time to start distancing yourself from those relationships because I really, really don't think that those people who think that they are better than someone else purely because they shop at a certain brand or because they wear a bag that costs an arm and a leg makes them more valuable than anyone else. But that was the last luxury egg and probably the biggest one that I had to share with you today. I would love for you to share your big luxury eggs in the comment section with us. I always love reading about your thoughts and experiences. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching. And before I let you go, I do have to announce the winner of my RMS giveaway who I haven't actually selected yet because I promised you that it would go on for two weeks. So I will make sure to select the winner of the giveaway before this video goes live and I will put their name up on the screen here. So if you see your name appear now, congratulations, you are the winner of my Hermes book giveaway. Please make sure that you send me an email at my one and only email address, which is also going to be up on the screen now. And for those of you who entered the giveaway but did not win this time, were you not because I do have a few more giveaways planned, actually quite a few more giveaways planned for the rest of the year. So stay tuned until my next giveaway. But I just really appreciate you being here and watching and I cannot tell you how much your views, your comments, your likes, all your support means to me. I really appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you back here with a new video really, really soon.